Right now, a lot of people are wondering, can COVID-19 infect my pets? Can I infect them? Can they infect me? And so I just wanna run down some basics of the virus and what we know so far in regards to all that. At the end of the day, I'll say this now, your biggest concern is other people, but let's get into it. There are seven known coronaviruses that infect people. Three of these are severe respiratory diseases, okay? So one of those is SARS-1, uh, and that was, the, you know, that came around in about 2002. The next one is MERS, Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome. And that one's highly fatal. Camels were also a big carrier and spreader of that one. All three of these are zoonotic, meaning they can go from animal to people. And also all three were suspected to originate from bats. Now backing up a little bit, there are hundreds of coronaviruses in our world and they can infect many different species, primarily mammals and birds. Now there are different kinds of viruses. Coronaviruses are RNA viruses, which is opposed to a DNA virus. RNA viruses are also prone to having a lot more mutations because of the proofreading that occurs with their genetics. RNA viruses also have very large genomes, meaning there's more information to be proofread or not proofread, AKA potential to get more mutations. Now mutations occur completely at random. However, when a mutation turns out to be more favorable for an organism or a virus, that mutation will continue to survive and thrive and multiply and evolve to be a different kind of virus than it was before that is more uh, infectious or deadly or what have you. FYI, this is the basic concept of evolution, okay? It's mutations that cause these changes. Do these mutations make this species more successful at surviving and more importantly, reproducing? If the answer to that is yes, that mutation will continue to become an adaptation. And it's these adaptations that many people like myself find fascinating about the animal world. Unfortunately, the adaptations these viruses have can be really scary. One of the adaptations that the SARS viruses have evolved to have, which includes COVID-19, and of course the SARS virus from 2002, is that it has these, these crown-like spikes on it, hence the name corona, right? These spikes make it much more effective at attaching to host cells, meaning the virus can infect more organisms and more cells much faster. The research shows the COVID-19 virus adheres very well to human cells, but we already know that. And research also shows that it can attach to pig cells, dogs, primates, cats, ferrets, other research indicates it can also potentially attach to pangolins, raccoon dogs, Google that if you don't know what it is, uh, camels, civets, and probably other animals as well. For animals or people to feel sick, two things have to happen, okay? Number one, the virus has to attack a sufficient number of healthy cells. Number two, the host needs to mount an aggressive enough immune response to become clinically ill. And so when you get sick from this virus, it's actually your immune system fighting it and it's creating inflammation in the lungs and the airways, and that's why we're getting clinical signs like difficulty breathing and coughing and fever and whatnot. It's all because of your inflammatory response to the virus. Some species can carry COVID-19, but not necessarily get sick with it. Okay, so the dogs appear to be an example of that, where they can carry the virus, but their host cells are not as good at housing the virus, and the virus doesn't do as well, it doesn't replicate as well, and dogs appear so far not to get sick from it. So they essentially can carry it, but they're not likely to get sick from it. As far as we know, they don't. Also, because of that, they're also very not likely to be spreading it. So in regards to your dogs giving you COVID-19, I'm not worried about that at all. Pigs and chickens also appear to be what we call dead end hosts, just like the dogs, meaning Yes, the virus can maybe get in their system, but they're not likely to get sick, they're not likely to spread it, so the virus in that organism is not gonna reach any further, AKA infect you or other animals. So far, the research shows a little bit different with cats and ferrets, and this goes for not just COVID-19, but this is also consistent with the SARS virus and that they can apparently get sick with it, as we saw with that cat in Belgium, and as you guys might have heard, there's a tiger in the Bronx Zoo and some other cats at that zoo that are showing clinical signs of COVID-19 and have tested positive for it. Now, if you're worried about your cats giving you COVID-19, I wouldn't worry about that because by far the most likely way your cat got COVID is from you or somebody else in your house. That's much more likely to spread it to you if you don't already have it. So same thing goes with ferrets. If ferrets do appear to be highly vulnerable to the disease, yet they also mount a very significant immune response. And so another thing I love about these little weasels is that because of this, they might use ferrets in developing vaccines for COVID-19. So I wanna clarify this at the end of the day, I would not be concerned with your pets giving you COVID-19. If your pets for some reason are tested and tested positive for COVID-19, it's probably because you or somebody else in your household gave it to them. I'd be much more concerned about getting COVID-19 from people. That's why we're practicing this intensive social distancing because you're far more likely to get it from a person than any other animal. Do you have pets and you are COVID-19 positive, then practice 
appropriate social distancing it the best that you can. So if you have ferrets especially, or cats, do your very best to keep your distance from them. Don't feed them, don't interact with them, don't do the things that, just like in people, can spread the virus to them. And it's not fun, but it's you know with their best interests in mind. Now I do want to make a note that animals can act as what we call a fomite, meaning basically an object that can become contaminated after being handled or in close contact with it can then infect other individuals. For instance, if somebody with COVID-19 is you know, up in a dog's face and they're kissing and licking them and spreading the virus to the dog, but not even giving it to them, that dog, if it goes and licks somebody else shortly thereafter, the dog can carry the virus from the person to another person. So that's something you do want to keep in mind and a part of the social distancing and just being smart you know, and using common sense when dealing with this virus from day to day anyways. So I just want to make this super, super clear. Your biggest concern for eating corona COVID-19 is from other people, not pets. And if your pet has corona, it's probably from you, okay? So if you have it, practice social distancing, use common sense, be practical here. Don't be super stressed about your pets getting it and be really smart around your pets if you have it. I hope that clarifies some things, makes sense, and you can keep living your social distance lives without being overly concerned about your pets. Thanks for listening.